Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to our final live interview of the European BioBlitz of 2021. Um, I hope you're having a really great second day, making plenty of observations uh, wherever you are in Europe. And we are not far off uh, now reaching 20,000 observations recorded uh, since we kicked off at midnight uh, yesterday. Um, so, um, and that's nearly 4,000 of you uh, who have been out collecting records over the last couple of days. It would be great to see how many we can get uh, before the uh, clock strikes midnight uh, tonight as well. So do make sure that um, you are getting out and about with the iNaturalist app and collecting some records. Um, so for our uh, final interview uh, today, we've got um, Chris Taklis, who is uh, joining us from Greece um, and is a marine and conservation biologist. Um, so Chris is going to talk about his research around nudibranchs, um, which if you haven't come across before, are really fascinating uh, little creatures. Um, so Chris, without further ado, um, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and some of your research? Hello, Matt. Nice to be here. Uh, sorry. Uh, my research uh, starts uh, from Greece because it's not just my home. It, uh, the sea here is great. It has, it's a hotspot of uh, biodiversity in Mediterranean. And like Spain, uh, it has a lot of nudie branches. They are very small. Uh, they are tiny. The most nudie branches are less than one centimeter. So it's very nice to go and search out for them. So you have a, a, a nice fieldwork life of being out on the boat looking looking for new debris then? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I, I am... Sorry. Yeah, sometimes no, I'm you, almost uh, three and four hours in the sea to uh, research and photograph them. Amazing. And we were just talking before we, before we came online, we were talking about the weather and, uh, and it must be nice to have a, a space to be able to cool off. I was just thinking for, for um, our um, viewers who, who don't know as well, so not necessarily something that everyone's familiar with is, is nudibranchs. Um, can you start with just giving us sort of what is a nudibranch? <laughs> and for the viewers who don't know, nudibranchs are like slugs. The snails we see, the slugs without the cell, mm -hmm. but uh, in the water. So they have a lot of variety. You can find them in every shape, uh, in every color, and in every depth. So the, a, a huge variety out there as well. I actually recommend, like, if you if you haven't done it before, then go do um, get on uh, on your search engine of choice and look up some um, images of nudibranchs because they are they are amazing, aren't they? They, they are so um, different in, in so many different amazing uh, varieties. Exactly. The, uh, you have uh, nudie branches like uh, snails. You have uh, nudie branches like Pokemon. They look like <laughs> Pokemon. You have nudie branches that uh, they look like just a blob. Hmm. You have really a huge variety of nudie branches. Every nudie branch is different than the other. And do you have a favorite? Mm, difficult. Maybe the common uh, nudibranch, Flabellina finis. Uh, it's a purple nudibranch, which uh, I have photo from below uh, the nudibranch. And um, it was starting on hydrozoan. And uh, from below, it looks like a small alien with a lot of hands. <laughs> Amazing. Well, maybe we can um, find some uh, photos to pop up on, on the social media as well um, for that. When you're, um, when you're out doing your fieldwork then and you're, um, you're looking for these new how how do you go about finding them? First of all, uh, I had to study them. Hmm. I had to study uh, what substrate uh, they live. Because some nudie branches, they live only in muddy waters. Uh, other nudie branches want some coral. 
So I need to study not only their substrate, but their food also, and how uh, their eggs do they look like. Mm. Because uh, if I study that, and I know that I see hydrozoan, uh, which is common for some aeolid nudibranches, that means I can find the aeolid nudibranch there or nearby, because the nudibranches live on their food, they uh, have their eggs on their food, and they go. They don't go away. The most uh, species, so it's easy to find them if you know where to look. It sounds like a nice life, just living living with your food. Um, I'd live <laughs> in the kitchen if I if I could. I think. Um, and so you talked about them coming, that finding different types of nudibranchs in different depths as well. So when when you're doing fieldwork, does that mean you have to sometimes do like snorkeling, or you sometimes uh, deep diving? Um, yeah, what's your what does a typical day in the field look like when you're searching uh, for nudibranchs? I free dive. I am not scuba diving. Oh I'm wow! Free diving. Wow. So, uh, okay, I'm free diving up to ten meters. So. But the most nudie branches, I find it in very shallow waters, uh, usually from one to three meters. So it's wow. everyone can free dive uh, to three meters and see them. It's very Maybe. easy. Yeah, if, if, if you learn about them, each country has uh, their own nudie branches. So it doesn't matter where you go, you, you can fight a nudie branch. <laughs> and some nudie branches, uh, they need uh, scuba diving. The, you need to go up uh, to 20, 25 meters. So, except if you can free dive uh, to 20 meters, <laughs> then but, you're okay. That takes a bit of practice, I imagine. Yes, it needs a lot of practice. Uh, I, for my free diving, I had to take a course and uh, exams, of course, and because I'm pure apnea free diver one. And I uh, have uh, to practice almost every day. Wow. If I don't uh, free dive, for example, the winter and in late uh, of uh, spring or in summer, uh, I cannot go out uh, more than four or five meters until I practice again. Wow. So it's, uh, it takes some, some almost, almost like a, uh, you know, if you were training for a sport and you have to have your kind of off season you need to keep training to uh, to keep fit. Yeah. Perfect. And so you mentioned as well that you do lots of uh, photography of um, of the nudibranchs as well. Have you uh, have you got um, particular uh, setups and kit that you need to use for for that kind of underwater photography as well? I have a single comp uh, compact camera. For example, wait, I have it here. That's it. That's oh, wow. my camera. The only thing I need to do to have in my camera is a macro mode. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for compact camera, it's very good because uh, when I fry, free dive, I can reach my camera very close to the subject. Mm -hmm. And it's better than have a DSLR camera with lenses. Mm -hmm because uh, sometimes I need to put my camera under the rocks or in schisms of rocks. And with big camera and lens, I cannot do that. Mm. And I love to take photos. I'm taking photos every kind of species I see, because I think that's the only proof of what you see. Mm. And so do the photos fall, is that kind of part of the, the um almost the fun of it for you as well is kind of getting those photos do you, are you going for more kind of artistic photos or is this also part of your data collection as well do you use those photos in your um in your research well i'm using it also for research but i am also using it for every day every day in my life and uh, for artistic sometimes i create a uh, of posters or something else with uh, these photos. Amazing. And um, those photos and, and your kind of observations, so you're obviously using them in your own research, but do you also upload those to any kind of shared database as well? Yes, of course. It's uh, every time when I got get out of the sea, 
uh, I come home or in office, wherever I am, I clean my camera and uh, when it's clean from salt water, I upload the photos to iNaturalis first, which means uh, many projects uh, can take my photos. And uh, it depends if uh, there is some other project, maybe in other platform, I upload them also there. Amazing. So it means that the same platform that um, you know we're asking everyone to to put their their own observations on, if they want to go, if they if they can get out free diving this afternoon and find some nudibranchs, they'll be able to um, upload those to um, to iNaturalist as well and uh, and add to the to the BioBlitz total. Uh, unfortunately, today I can't. Uh, I am in the city for some uh, working I have here for few days, so I went yesterday in the sea, but I couldn't find the branches. Ah, no, <laughs> yeah, they always always hiding on the uh, on the days. Um, I think that's that's uh, really exciting. I just wanted to ask one more thing as well around um, around your kind of research questions and what your what from your observations of the nudibranchs, your what um, kind of um, research questions you're trying to answer through um, photographing and, and uh, looking at these nudibranchs. Uh, it depends hmm. because, uh, for example, if I take an uh, owl and uh, nudie branches. I have, for example, one uh, research paper, one research article about uh, an alien uh, nudie branches I found. Um, it's not clear uh, what I can find. Usually in research, I'm looking about their uh, spatial area where uh, they expand and uh, uh, what's their behavior? Usually I'm working on their behavior. I suppose that's the amazing thing about maybe looking at a group that, that has relatively few researchers um, looking at it as well. It means that really you're discovering new things all the time just, just by being down there and looking at them um, as well. Yes. Amazing stuff. Um, well, Chris, thank you so much for sharing your research and being with us today. It's been really interesting learning about Nudibranchs um, a little bit more. I hope everyone uh, listening and, and watching has, has picked up a little bit more and maybe been inspired to uh, go out and have a go with uh, a bit of free diving and photography and, and looking for some of these amazing things. Um, you can listen, you can uh, head to our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter um, at ERN underscore intersections uh, for more information about Chris and his research. We've got some stuff up there. Um, if you have any questions for Chris as well, and you'd like to maybe have a look at some of his new rank photos online, uh, Chris is uh, across the social medias as well at uh, C Taclis as well. That's C-T-A-K-L-I-S. Um, and that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and the like. Um, there is still time to download the iNaturalist app if you haven't got out already um, and upload your wildlife sightings as well. So um, don't forget, we have a uh, quiz coming up as well this afternoon at four o'clock um, in our stories on Instagram and Facebook. Um, but first, thank you so much, Chris, for uh, coming to talk to us. Thanks everyone for watching, posting and uploading. Um, and I'll uh, let you get all get back out there um, and carry on recording wildlife for the afternoon. So thanks again, Chris, and thank you to everyone watching. Thank you very much, Martin.